Good day. This video is about the calculus of vector value functions. For this presentation, we have several objectives. The first being, we want to define the limit of a vector valued function at a given point. And from this definition, we want to introduce the notion of continuity of a vector valued function at a given point. Also, we will be defining the derivative and integral of a vector valued function. So let us start. Given a vector valued function r, whose coordinates are x, y, and z, we define the limit of this function r of t as t approaches a as the limit of the components x, y, and z. So the limit of r of t as t approaches a is the vector valued function whose components are the limit of x of t as t approaches a, the, the limit of y of t as t approaches a, and the limit of z of t as t approaches a. Provided that the limits of the functions x, y, and z exist. Otherwise, we say that the limit of r is non-existent or the limit does not exist. Now, the vector function r is said to be continuous at the point t equals a if the following three conditions are satisfied. First, the vector valued function r evaluated at a should exist and the limit of r as t approaches a is also existent and moreover r evaluated at a should agree with the limit of r as t approaches a if one of these three conditions is not satisfied then we say that the vector function r is discontinuous at the point t equals a. So let us look at some examples. So here we have two vector value functions and we want to compute the corresponding limits. So for the first item, let us look at the limit of the vector value function whose coordinates are t plus 1, t squared minus 4 over t minus 2, and the last coordinate is sine of 2t minus 4 divided by t minus 2. So what we need to do here is we need to compute for the limit of each of the coordinates. So the limit of t plus 1 as t approaches 2 is, by substitution, equal to 3. The limit of the second coordinate can be computed by factoring the numerator and canceling common factors. So we will have, in this case, limit of t plus 2. And upon evaluation at t equals 2, we get 4. And finally, for the third coordinate, the limit of sine 2t minus 4 all over t minus 2 is By L'Hopital's rule, this is the same as uh, the limit of 2 cosine 2t minus 4. And so plugging in 2, we get 2. Therefore, the limit of the vector valued function is the vector 3, 4, 2. For the second function, so we also do the same thing and compute for the limit of each component as t approaches 1 from the left side. So for the first component, we want the limit of the absolute value of t minus 1 divided by t minus 1. And since we are taking the limit as t approaches 1 from the left, so we can get a test point. Um, less uh, a number very close to 1 from the left side, say 0 0.999. So the numerator will simplify to 1 minus t, 
which is the negative of t minus 1, and the denominator is as is. So we see that the numerator will cancel with the denominator and leave a minus 1 as um, the quotient. And so we will have here the limit of minus 1 as t approaches 1 from the left side. And so we get minus 1. For the second coordinate, we want the limit of 1 plus cosine pi of t divided by t squared minus 1. And by L'Hopital's rule, we get, so the numerator becomes negative pi sine pi t, while the, the denominator becomes 2t. So plugging in t, um, rather plugging in 1 to t, we will get 0. Okay? And finally, for the third coordinate, we want the limit of tangent pi t divided by t minus 1 as t tends to 1 from the left side. Okay, again, by the L'Hopital's rule, we get the derivative of the numerator, which is pi secant squared pi t, and of course, the, de the derivative of the denominator is 1. So, we just need to substitute 1 to t here. And what we are going to get is pi secant squared pi, which is equal to pi. And so, the limit in this case is the vector minus 1, 0, pi. Now let us look at this second example. So here, we are given a vector valued function which is defined in a piecewise manner. So when t is not equal to zero, the value of the vector valued function is the vector sine t over t, t minus one e to the t. Now if t is equal to zero, the value of the vector function is i hat minus 2j hat plus k hat. Now we want to determine whether the given function is continuous at t equals 0. So for our solution, since we want to determine whether the function is continuous or not, we need to check for th the following three conditions. So first, is r of 0 defined? Yes. r of 0 is the vector 1, negative 2, 1. Second, let us compute for the limit of r of t as t tends to 0. Okay. So, since we want t to approach 0, we will be using the first definition in the piecewise function. So, we want the limit of sine of t over t as t tends to 0 and the limit of t minus 1 as t tends to 0, and the limit of e to the t as t tends to 0. So this limit is the same as 1 minus 1, 1. Now observe that the limit of r of t as t tends to 0 is not the same as r evaluated at 0. So the third condition of continuity is violated, and hence, the function is not continuous at t equals 0. And we say that r is discontinuous at t equals 0.